Hey guys and girls, um, as promised in this video we're going to talk about morality and the uh, moral implications of atheism versus theism. Now if atheists are right and there is no God, then the human sense of morality can only be explained in one of two ways. Explanation one would be that morality is a product of evolution and that uh, evolution actually um, created morality to help uh, humanity coexist together as a species. Uh, explanation number two would be that uh, morality is simply a product of culture or of society. So whatever culture you were raised in, um, you'll adopt that culture's standards of right and wrong. Now of course there are many problems with these theories. They just don't wash. Um, explanation number one that uh, morality is a product of evolution has several fatal flaws. Number one is that uh, humanity, humans in general, um, obviously have a strange compulsion to reject morality. We constantly struggle against it. We constantly do what we know is wrong. Uh, there is this inherent drive in us to rebel and reject the sense of morality and the sense of right and wrong. Now if morality was programmed into us by evolution, then that drive to reject morality must also be programmed into us by evolution. Now how does that make any sense? The second problem with this theory is that um, if uh, morality is simply a, a product of evolution, then it's really just genetic programming, um, which means that there really can be no wrong. Um, people simply act on their genetic programming, whatever it may be. So let's say that you're a serial killer and your genetic programming compels you and drives you to murder and kill people. Um, who can fault you? I mean, you're simply acting on what your genes tell you to do. Um, there's no right or wrong aspect to that. Yeah, you can be put in jail uh, for breaking laws, but there's nothing wrong with it. You can't say it's wrong. Another big problem with this theory is that engaging in survival of the fittest, which is at the heart of Darwinism, um, engaging in that behavior and, and practicing that is wrong. For example, let's say that I own a deli shop, right? I'm making a living, making money. It's my, it's my way of surviving. Across the street, some guy opens up his own deli shop. He's competing with me. Now, if I go get a gun and go across the street and shoot the guy to eliminate that competition, uh, practicing survival of the fittest, uh, preserving my ability to provide for myself, uh, that would be wrong. That would be immoral. Now, how does that jive, how does that mesh with evolution, which supposedly is driven completely by uh, survival of the fittest? Now, moving on to explanation two, which is that uh, morality is a product of uh, culture or society, we've got issues there as well. The first issue is that in that scenario, there can be no real right and wrong. It's impossible to label anything as right and wrong. Maybe I come from a culture where abusing women is okay, it's acceptable. Um, how can you say it's wrong for me to go home and beat my wife? Or maybe beat my kids? Or maybe I come from a culture where uh, you simply take uh, what you want when you want it. Uh, how can you blame me for stealing your property? If morality is defined strictly by what your particular pocket of humanity deems appropriate, then how can anyone criticize anybody for anything? I mean, for example, the uh, wacky religious cults where you know guys have 12 wives and uh, you know grown men marry 14-year-old uh, girls against their will. Uh, they are simply acting upon their own cultural sense of morality. So how can you fault them? So it's obvious to me that uh, right and wrong uh, really only works when you can appeal to an ultimate authority of such things. For instance, let's say that um, I was stranded on a desert island with an atheist. And let's say that he was a smaller, weaker guy than I am. And let's say that he worked all day collecting mangoes and coconuts and stuff. And I just laid on the beach. Now imagine that I walk over, I punch him in the face, and I take all his food. Um, what do you think he would do? He'd probably get ticked off, and he'd probably complain, and at some point he'd probably tell me that what I did was wrong. Um, but how is that wrong? I mean, what standard of morality is he appealing to there? There's no police on the island. Uh, there's no chance I could go to jail. So what is he appealing to? The reality is that he must be appealing to God. 
He's appealing to an ultimate moral lawgiver. Um, and he's appealing to that little voice uh, that God puts in all of us with his stamp of the whole right and wrong thing. I want to stop here and point out that any atheist who responds to these challenges I present by pointing a finger at theism and trying to find flaws in the way that theism explains morality is missing the point. I focus on atheistic answers to big issues, and I put them to the test, because atheists claim to have better answers. If the atheistic answers don't hold up to scrutiny, then the whole case for atheism is flimsy at best. To put it in simple terms, if your only response to my arguments is to get defensive and try to find similar flaws in theism, that's a bad sign. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that all atheists are evil heathens and they're all immoral and they're all depraved, what have you. That's the typical response that um, theists get from atheists when we talk about this stuff. They take these wild leaps and put words in our mouths and things like that. I'm not saying that if a person adopts an atheistic viewpoint that he or she is doomed to live a wretched life, depraved and evil. Because even atheists still have that little voice, that moral compass of ultimate right and wrong. Even though they don't believe in God, uh, God's programming is still there. So to wrap up, um, ultimately, if you adopt an atheistic viewpoint, then you can no longer rightfully label anything as wrong. Um, and you can no longer criticize anyone for doing something that you personally deem as wrong. Because morality and right and wrong really only work in the context of an ultimate lawgiver, God. Okay, that's it. Check out the blog, godlowdown.com. See you next time.